The Catholics of Oz is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to episode 77 of The Catholics of Oz. The Catholics of Oz is a show where we discuss faith, culture, and what's been happening from an Aussie perspective. Whether it's synods or science, apostolates and apps, providence or productivity, you can hear it right now on The Catholics of Oz. Hello, I'm Lindsay Sands and welcome to episode 77 of The Catholics of Oz, our post-Easter episode. And we're a little bit shorter in hosts today because uh, Caroline is missing in action. Uh, She's taking a bit of a break, but I am still joined by lovely co-host, wonderful brother from another mother, Lino Sabol. Lino, how are you today? I'm doing well, Lindsay. Doing well. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Um, it is a bit chilly, actually. A bit yes. cold and and then usual in Melbourne. Well, yeah. like I keep on saying, Melbourne's always cold, but yeah, lately it's been just normal, beautiful days. Warm. Yes, you know, during the day and then yep. during the mornings, not as fresh and crisp as this morning. Yeah, and um, just a little side note, um. <laughs> Uh, the only reason why I, I I sort of woke up about mm, quarter to eight was um one of our poor cats um was sick on our bed. Oh, so, okay, yeah. yeah, poor thing. One of your fair babies needed a hug. Yeah, little, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know uh, okay. Oh, cool. so, so I would say I thought to myself, mm, I better get up now because yep. if I don't, I'll get a text from Lindsay at nine o'clock going, "Where are you?" And I'll going. <laughs> I'm still in bed. I'm still waiting. Just like that last episode we had when we started at nine and I said I had like a Barry White voice. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You're oh, a bit on the tired oh, side. So, so tired. Yeah. So tired. So still few, waking up. Still yeah. waking. Still yeah. waking. You're up. a bit it's lower than, up. yeah, that's right. Very baritone <laughs> kind of voice. Baritone. Like, yeah. Barry, that, there it is, yeah. baritone. I think that's baritone the, the word I'm looking for, yeah. That's right, that's right. <laughs> yeah, um, so uh, we thought today uh, we'd have a bit of a casual episode. It's it's post-Easter for us at this point. It's um it's a week since uh, since the Easter um, wow. or since Easter season began. We're in the Easter yeah. season now. He's risen, by the way. Exactly. There you go. Yep. Yeah. yep. Hey. Yeah. Um, wow. And so we thought, you know, like we do every year after Easter, we'd have a bit more of a relaxed episode, celebrate, have a bit more of a casual conversation. And, you know, we'll still have a few topics to talk about, but um, but just, you know, just keep it relaxed and, and enjoy a little bit. So wherever you are listening, relax, enjoy, get your favorite cup of tea or coffee or whatever beverage it is that you enjoy and, yeah. and a snack and <laughs> sit down and enjoy with us. Um, exactly, uh, before, exactly. Yeah. Before we continue, though, um, if you're new to the Catholics of Oz, welcome. You've joined us for a a much more relaxed episode than usual. Um, you can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast player. Don't forget to give us a five-star rating and some positive feedback so that we can hear from you and reach new people, which is what we love to do. Don't forget that SQPN, SQPN also hosts The Catholics of Oz on YouTube as well as all of its other shows. You can subscribe there and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications when new episodes of this show and all of the other wonderful shows on the network are released. If you are a fan or um, or if you've never heard of this show, Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World, uh, I've been watching on YouTube lately. They've started adding some really cool graphics and uh, explainers and little figures that, you know, there's little little doms and jimmies that walk in and out and hold signs and do things. So, yeah, it's a bit of fun to watch. So, yeah. So, Lido, uh, let's get this show on the road. Um, how was Easter? How did your Easter very, go? Actually, very good, actually. Yeah. Um, Holy Week, I believe, and I may have mentioned this in many other episodes, is I um, find it more special and spiritual for myself yeah. than Christmas. I, I'm not – look, Christmas is uh, – it's Christmas season – it's, it's it's an amazing season for us. Yeah. But knowing that um, our Lord Jesus died and rose again. Yeah. Ro- he has risen, you know, throughout his crucifixion. I just, it still, it still spellbinds me. Yeah. You know, he's, oh, it's a, it's amazing. Um, And I uh, just did the family thing. I think it probably the same with you, Leeds, where we had a, both, we had, Christmas, oh, Christmas, sorry. <laughs> it Easter. feels like Christmas the way we do the family like, oh, oh, thing, man. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I know, before, yeah. Well, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Before we know it will be Christmas. But um, yeah, um, we had, um, so we had lunch with Bernie's side of the family. Yep. And um, we had dinner with my, with my, my side of the family, with my brother and my mum and 
and the sister-in-law and the um, nieces and nephews. Yeah. So it was a, it was a, it was an awesome day. It was an awesome, beautiful day actually. Yeah. Was it raining? Oh, I can't remember. No. Uh, oh. Easter Sunday was actually perfect. It was like a, yeah. a com- comparable to a, a beautiful spring day. It was actually a bit. It was a bit warm actually. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because it was probably the last warm day before. The, the cold weather. The cold yeah. weather came in. Yeah. So now we're having, we've had a few rainy days. We've had some overcast days. And then we're, we're now we've settled at the moment on these sunny but, but cool days. That's where that's where we are at the moment. Yeah. But it's certainly cooler in the evenings and the mornings now. Yeah. But it, but Easter Sunday was glorious. In fact, the whole of, uh, from Good Friday to Easter, the weather was, was oh, perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. It was perfect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just, usually we were, were ready to, um, so waiting to get our umbrellas and coats out and, yes. and everything. But I was like, hmm. Oh, no, no, well, not even a jumper. Oh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes a jumper, yeah. but yeah, it was good. It was well, good. that's what I said to, to you know, Jerry, like, you know, who's um, yeah, a good friend, a, a good friend as well. Um, yeah, yeah. After yeah. Stations of the Cross on Friday morning, I said to Jared, said, gee, normally wear jackets and jumpers and umbrellas, you know, possibly. Yeah, because we do it outside at our parish. A lot of parishes do this too. You do it outside. Uh, you have a special Stations of the Cross on Good Friday, yeah. So uh, no, I was uh, I was actually short sleeves. I was wearing a shirt, a short sleeve shirt, because uh, I looked yeah. outside in the morning. And thought, like, this this looks like, a bit warmer than is, usual. Is it? Yeah. Warmer than usual, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the sun really beamed out. Well, not as much, but it's still yeah. nice and nice and warm. It wasn't too cold and too warm. It's like a nice, perfect day. Yeah, it was good to have a. a you know, a nice Easter <laughs> were the ones, the, the ones <laughs> well, rather than freezing sense. to death. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. Great. Were there any, anything from any of the three, you know, big services, you know, the Holy Thursday, um, the Good Friday, Easter Vigil, anything that stood out in any of those services to you as, as especially significant this year, do you think? Oh, I think I, I, I love them all. Um, yeah. I did love um, the... Watching of the twelve disciples that mm. we've, we've sort of, uh, I think all of us have agreed on um, that choosing the twelve disciples didn't have to be all male, you know. Uh, look, we're yeah. going to have a lot of um, chat on Discord about this. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> I understand, but you know, last year because of COVID, um, is it correct, Lindsay? Father Michael chose. Uh, our families. Yeah. yeah so uh, last year uh, we had, uh, because of COVID, basically the washing of the feet, uh, the instruction in Melbourne was that you don't need, you don't need to do it. Or in fact, don't do it because of COVID restrictions. So Father, uh, Father Michael, who's now our previous parish priest, so we've had, <laughs> yeah. we've gone through two yes. Father Michaels now, we're <laughs> up to Father John now. Father Michael thought he would do something symbolic at that time where he had uh, families. So we had, for example, um, a husband and wife, parent parent and child child and parent you know um what is it you know, grandparents and yeah all you know these different you know uh, aunties uh, aunties and nieces and nephews you know just different combinations of family who washed each other's feet and you know and he didn't you know he didn't have to do that but he wanted the symbolism of service you know still you know like you know Jesus you know um you know do you do you know what I've done to you I've given you an example you know, to, to follow as well, you know, to wash the feet of, wash the feet of others. So he, he was trying to talk about this, give this idea of uh, one of the places where you can wash feet is, is in your families, you know, you know, the ser- service, if you, if you want to start service, start at home, start where you've got people around you, you can serve right now. You don't need to, you know, start by going out, you know, there, there are, there is service you can do outside of your, your, your family, but the, the first one is here. So it was very powerful. It was very powerfully symbolic. It was. Yeah. It was. What I yeah. loved about it was um, did, they, did they alternate? So if it was a mother and son, the son will wash the mother's feet and the mother will wash the son's yeah, feet. Yeah, they switched is around. Yeah, basically. Around. And yeah. I love that. I yeah. I was really moved in a sense mm. of seeing, seeing that. And so I think this year was just a lot of different um, people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, really young, old yeah. Um, Middle aged like us, Lindsay. Yeah. Um, well, you are forty <laughs> yeah. now, aren't you? Pe- oh, yeah. yeah, I am. Are yeah. yeah, people are, like are, us. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. <laughs> I yeah. can say that now. I can. Yeah. Uh, actually, I was asked to be to to have my feet washed, and I, I um that because the person who called said, oh um we can you know would you like would you like to do it or would you like your son to do it? And I said my son straight away. That was an easy easy one. You know, I've done it. I've had it several times because we we had a thing where in years past, I'm talking about like. Years, you know, uh, maybe 
you know, before before our, our last parish priest, it gets really confusing trying to do the chronology of <laughs> yeah, our parish now, is, especially if you've yeah, had a priest, you know, he's had a three-year <laughs> term. <you> know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so in, in the past, it, essentially yes. what was happening was sort of the same people were being chosen. And it, it, um, we have this thing, and, you know, and I love our parish, so I'm not going to, I'm not knocking it, but, you know, sometimes things set in where uh, it's just easier to have the same people do the same thing over and over again. And, it, and you know, we could see it wasn't healthy, you know, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily good because it kind of set the impression that um, there were particular people that had particular things, you know, and this isn't like controversial. I'm not getting into it. It's not parish politics. It's just, it's just a, a mindset that it's set in that wasn't bad, but also wasn't good either. So, because it wasn't, in, it wasn't involving everyone. So they, you know, it, we, you know, it started in conversation to, you know, to, to talk about how can we, how can we change the tradition of the parish? Because it was a parish tradition, you know, to have the same people. How can we change it so that more people are involved? So that was the first step that we had. Um, and then the thing about, uh, about you know, we had, so you, you mentioned, we, you know, it was, um, you know, we've had women having their feet washed for the first time this year. I don't think it's it's so controversial really anymore. And, and the reason, yeah, the reason I say that is, is two things. One, um, so again, it, it was another tradition that our parish had where it was only men and that needed to, you know, that needed to slowly, you know, and carefully be changed, you know, in, and when I say carefully, in a way that people understood why the change was happening, not so just, why was the changes you know, happening? Not yeah, just, Hey, exactly. we've suddenly become feminist. Let's wash women's feet. That's not what it was no, at all. Yeah, you know? yes, it's right. it's a, <laughs> yeah. There was a reason why, yeah. why the change is and which hopefully we can make people understand why the change is. Yeah. But we're not trying to totally change the church it's just yep. the way you know you know what i mean lizzie it's yeah just the, the message we want to bring out is that everyone is part of the church that's right yeah, yeah. The, uh, the people of god yeah everyone is exactly yeah. exactly yeah yeah we um yeah so we had a discussion uh in, in in the parish in some parts of the parish about pope francis's you know about his direction you know he's the one who who made the change in, well, i think it was 2016 oh, yeah, i think it was or something. 15 well, 16 did, I, I could be i don't know anyway someone else can some historian can <laughs> come on and correct that for me anyway it was a while ago. it was yeah. you know years ago uh but he he made the change um in uh, so again not not for not because of feminist principles or anything like that, but the idea is is that everyone who is baptized is in the service of God. You know, our baptisms are the same, and so when we say the people of God, we're, you know, we're talk, you know, the document says it can be men, it can be women, it can be priests, deacons, sisters, you know, you know, uh, consecrated persons, whatever it might be. Um, you know, lay people with special responsibilities, whatever, whatever is, uh, whatever is appropriate in that, you know, in the context of that parish setting. So, and the thing is, um, you know, some people were a bit worried that, that, you know, that people may get upset, but no one batted an eyelid, to be honest. No one, well, you yeah, know, exactly. No one really, no, no one arced up or, or said anything. And I think, I think people understood. And in fact, the women who were asked to do it, it was beautiful seeing them up there. None of them refused and said, no, I can't do it. You know, uh, well, I'm not a male it. or anything that's like it. that. And it, Oh, wow. You know, yeah. Yeah. Um, and it, it really, you know, where, where we're going with, with washing women's feet is that again, all of us are in the service of God. Uh, all of us, you know, our baptism is the same. You know, my my baptism is the same as my wife's baptism. You know, you're, you're, or whatever it might be. Uh, we're all called to serve God. We we all are marked with from our baptism. We are all marked with the you know with the sign of Christ. We are all another Christ in our baptism. We all share the same ministerial priesthood, not the not the ordained priesthood that we talk about with priests, but the ministerial priesthood of our baptism. Uh, you know, we become another Christ. The, the, the sacrament, um, the sacraments are so important because they're not just a ritual. You know, we see the physical ritual of what happens, you know, the pouring of water, the blessing with hands, you know, the receiving of, of Jesus in the Eucharist. We see the physical side of things. But what we need to understand is that the, the a sacrament changes you as a person. You know, at, at the deepest fundamental level, you are no longer the same after a sacrament. You know, for example, after your baptism and your, your confirmation and so on. These things change who you are, and that change in 
in a man and a woman is is the same. It's Christ's, you know, it's Christ's, uh, it's us being brought into Christ's service. Now we might express it in different ways. Fair enough, you know, um, men and women have particular gifts and talents and things that they're that they're possibly better at. Um, you know, that the other may not be. That's you know, that's a debate for another time, a discussion for another time. But but at the end of the day, we're all in Christ's service, and this is why this is why um, the washing of the the feet of men and women, and now now with the inclusion of women. Uh, represents a um, a natural development in th- in that ritual of the washing of the feet. So it's it's described as a development in um, in the document. And so we talk about the development of doc- doctrine, the development of practice. It can develop and change over time uh, as as new insight is realized. So one of the insights that that we want to emphasize is that uh, the washing of the feet. Um, isn't just about the fact that Jesus washed 12 disciples. It's also, it's not just what he did. It's also what he said. I've given you an example for you, you know, for you to do as well. I'm paraphrasing it very badly. Um, So um, it's so correct. Yeah. yeah. Uh, So you might argue, you know, people might argue, but this is the mass of the institution of the priesthood and the Eucharist, which is true as well. I mean, that that's also part of it, but that can also happen alongside uh, the washing of the feet of women. The, The washing of the feet doesn't necessarily uh, you know, corresponds to the idea that there were twelve there with Jesus. It also corresponds to the idea that who are the disciples now? Us, exactly. All of us, us. <laughs> all of the, us. The whole church, yeah, exactly. Know, all of us yeah, in the church. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, no, that's that's great. That's great, Lizzie. Thanks for the explanation. Yeah, well, it's that's your good. fault. You yeah, said it was one of your favorite things. That you saw in <laughs> oh, well, you know, it was my fault. You know, yeah. well, just, I thought I thought it was one of the beautiful things that happened during a Holy Week, and um, you know, um. So Easter vigils are always amazing, you know. Um, we have all our prayers and our readings. I, I was, I must admit, I was so, so nervous because I know I was the first one to do the yes. first reading. I out of what was it, Liz? Six? Uh, seven readings. Yeah, there's seven, seven readings. Yeah, I was just right. reading. I was, I think it's either seven or ten because yeah. I remember one time. This at the Easter vigil you're talking about, isn't it? The Saturday. Yeah, Easter yes, vigil. Yeah, that's right. And, and you, oh, because you read the Genesis reading, the creation yeah, story. Yeah. Well done. You, you did really well with that. So, just that, for everyone that, else, thank uh, you, thank you, thank you. my family, we went to uh, to Holy Thursday, Good Friday. Uh, we watched Easter Vigil live streams because we've got a four-year-old, and he's he did pretty well with the first two. We didn't want to we didn't want to push our luck, but oh, then we and then we Easter went to Vigil's mass long. on Easter morning, <laughs> yeah, Sunday mass Easter morning. But yeah, watch the vigil. That's right. Yes, um, yeah. I, I actually I, I read that reading once uh, years and years ago, <laughs> and but it was in darkness. Uh, they had the church oh, dark, just, and it was exactly yeah. The, I, I whenever that reading is read, I, I actually love that reading so much. There's so much going on in it. So. Yeah, beautifully read, Lido. Well done. Yeah. Thanks, Liz. That's it. I was, like I said, I was just a bit nervous. bit nervy, of, yeah. Yeah, it was like, I, I knew that went, um, do we have the lights off? No, I think. No, the lights are on for, yeah. The, yeah. Lot, 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 once again, what we keep on saying, we, we changed priests again. But So, Father John Prince so <laughs> had one of the lights on. And it was hilarious, I think. What was it? No, it was some other reading I was doing. And um, I it was, the lights were dim. So, I was trying to read the words and then um, I think I missed a paragraph or something. And all of a sudden, you know, we, we, for the listeners out there, we have like studio yes, production lights. Yeah. lights. Yeah. And for the live streaming, light, yeah. This yeah. Light, yeah for the light, definitely for live streaming. And yeah. his light suddenly went bright in my eyes. And I went, <laughs> okay. I was thinking about to say to the microphone, uh, it's a bit bright there. I can you just dip it out just a bit because I cannot see. It'd be nice <laughs> if you could do that while you were reading, wouldn't it? Hey, can you dim that <laughs> yeah. a little bit? Just yep, yeah. Go ahead. I well, no, I'm just like the okay, light of creation light. is blinding me. <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in in the beginning, God. <laughs> God said, "Let there be lights." <laughs> <laughs> and, and six oh. studio lights switched <laughs> on. And <laughs> six. That is right, yeah. listeners. We had I couldn't six read anymore. Studio lights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, in the end, it was, yeah, the, the mass was very beautiful. And isn't it right, Liz, where we mm. put the, um, for, sorry for my ignorance, about the, the, the things we put in the candle, Paschal candle. Yeah, yeah. Is that for us in our Catholic faith? Is that, is that for us New Year's Day for us? In a sense? No, uh, no, no, no. So, because uh, New Year's Day for the church is actually the first day of Advent. So okay. that's when okay. the church's okay. year liturgical cycle restarts and everything. So recycle oh. church's church's <laughs> liturgical <laughs> cycle. What am I saying? Yeah. Um, so, so we, from you know we got readings yeah. A, B, and C. Don't yeah. we? Isn't it? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. but we um, but we yeah, bless the so the the um the the incense those little pins with incense put into the candle represent the the wounds of Christ. 
so you know their head, hands, and, and feet, and so on, and and pierced in the heart. Uh, and then it, yeah, it's like a, it's kind of like a because we have a that's the brand new Paschal candle though. Yeah. Okay, so okay, that okay. that candle is brand new. So that's the candle for for that year. It, it's done then, um, oh, and that's done okay, every year. Okay, okay. Be, because that candle, it's the Christ, Paschal. It's the Christ candle. It's the you know, it's the the Paschal mystery is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So it's um, and the whole idea is that that candle is lit. For example, at every mass, every sacrament that's done. Yeah. So it's always, you know, again, the symbolism of the, the presence of Jesus in, in these things that we do. Um, I, yeah. I remember once uh, a priest explained this at a, in a, hom- at a funeral homily. I went, to the, I went to the funeral of the mother of a past student. This was years ago. So one of, one of the students that I taught, her mother had passed away uh, and, she, uh, and she invited me to the funeral. So I went along and the priest... Um, who did the funeral was the priest that did the light, the last rites for her mum. But he was he lit the pastel candle um, at the start of mass rather than before the mass started. And he said, "Look, this candle I'm lighting here. This is the light of Christ. It's this is the candle that that travels through our entire spiritual life, our, our Christian life. It's it's there at the beginning of your life when you're baptized, or at the beginning of your Christian journey when you're baptized." It's there through all of your sacraments. It's there at every mass you go to. It will be there at your funeral. And this is the idea of Christ has moved through our entire life's journey with us. You know, our life is a pilgrimage and Christ has been our, our guide all the way through. And I, yeah, I love that. Um, nice. And so, oh, that so that, yeah, don't bat your, your eyes, you know, don't, don't fall asleep when the Paschal candle, uh, you know, is, is being blessed and, and, uh, and incensed and everything. It's such an important reminder. When you look at that candle, it's like, oh, Christ is, yeah, that's right. Christ is present in everything I do in my life. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So wow. You, got, you wow. got me going off another tangent, Lena. <laughs> oh, it's a sort of ta- oh, it's a tangent. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. this is all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's beautiful, though. Yeah. Um, it one is, thing. It is. Um, Yourself, Lindsay? Yeah, How I was going to say yeah. one thing. It was kind of a discovery, actually. It was something I found out by accident. So Ooh, discovery. Yeah. Great show, anyway. But yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's a different that's discovery. Yeah. That's a different rant. Yeah. That's a different rant. Yeah, this is a discovery I like. Um, so. <laughs> yep. Anyway, so um, so. Basically, on uh, on Holy Thursday, I was just flicking through some, you know, some different Catholic articles and different sites, you know, to see what, you know, people come up with different reflections every year. So it's nice to find different things. This is the one that stood out to me, uh, and I'll put it in the show notes. It was called How to Do the Seven Churches Visitation, and what is it anyway? So there's a custom. I didn't even know this existed, but there's a, so, you know, the, the altar of repose, right? So when... Uh, when the uh, what is it? When the the um, blessed sacrament is taken out of the church, yeah. So uh, yeah, well, not exposed. Even it's it's just put into it's put into another tabernacle outside the church, in a different oh, wow. location. So, oh wow! Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So so this year it was done in our small hall, which was interesting because there were so many people. But that's a different. That's different <laughs> altogether. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the thing is, um, the altar of repose was was. I mean, it's always beautiful, but um, this year it was exceptional uh, the way it was it was set up. And, you know, that, I don't know if you saw it, but, you know, there was this red carpet with the lights along the side and then just this beautiful setup with the way, with the way it was done. It was, it was um, uh, if anything, that really enhanced the sacredness of it this year. It was beautiful. However, there's a tradition in the church uh, that I didn't know of where people will do a pilgrimage on Holy Thursday night and visit seven... Holy Thursday night. Holy Thursday night, yeah. And they'll visit seven altar of, altars of repose. I was going to say that the way around. They'll visit seven altars of repose. And, uh, and it was really interesting. So I might just quickly share some notes from this article. It's very, very short. Um, but this person said, I was a junior in high school the first time I heard of the seven churches visitation. A friend had asked, want to come with us for the seven churches tomorrow? Uh, and my mum said, there's room in our car for you and your sister. Come with you for what now? I asked this person. Said. <laughs> um, and the person said, what, you've never heard of this? You've never heard of the seven churches of visitation? Now, Lena, I'm 40 years old and this year is the first year I've ever heard of it I, myself. I so. not, I've yeah. never heard of it. Yeah. And but, dad sort of you, is usually on, on the yeah. wall. He, he didn't never, and all my parents and anyone. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is great. Yeah. But it's, it's a simple idea. Um, mm, basically, okay. you, you mm. attend seven churches on Holy Thursday night and you take time to pray before the Blessed Sacrament in the altar of repose. So uh, basically, my understanding is that uh, it's the stations of the cross. You do two stations at each church. 
So you'll start, you know, you might start with your own parish and you'll do the first two stations. Then you'll go to another parish and pray two other stations at the next Blessed Sacrament. And then you go on and on and on. Yeah. So it's a, it's a tradition that apparently started in Rome. Uh, and that makes sense because, uh, you know, first of all, and uh, it, it may, I mean, there's lots of churches in Rome, so it wouldn't be too hard to visit seven churches. Oh, well, you could, yeah. uh, I'm pretty oh, sure you could actually walk that walking, rather than drive it. You, you say, could walk you that know, pilgrimage, you, yeah. You could probably walk um, that pilgrimage. That's, that's an interesting pil- pilgrimage. That's big. Wow. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much what people do. So it's it's doing a little bit a little bit of an extra devotional. Now, I don't reckon I could do it at the moment with you know with my youngest. You know, we've got to get my youngest child home. But I, actually, I reckon <laughs> yeah. I reckon sometime when I'm a little bit in the older, a little bit older, you know, I, I actually want to have a go and try uh, trying this out. It sounds like a beautiful devotion. Seven churches here, bro. Yeah. Uh, oh well, we got a holy family. Um, also yeah, Endeavour Hills. Yeah, Endeavour Hills. Two in Dandenong. Dandenong. Yeah. Two in Dandenong. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Hampton yeah, Park. Dandenong. You can go to Hampton Park. Then you could move on yeah. to Narry Warren. Mary you could go Warren. as far as Berwick and you set. We could actually... Oh. We've got yeah. seven churches in striking distance. No problem. <laughs> you, know, you could... In either direction, you could... Yeah. I mean, we have to cross dioceses to do it the way I just mentioned it, but that's all right. I'm sure no one will mind, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Move from them. Wow. Uh, go from Melbourne and finish in Sale. Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, the good yeah. thing about finishing in Berwick is that I'll be right near my house. So <laughs> it's a two-minute drive to get... A ten-minute drive to get home anyway. Exactly, there. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I thought that was a really interesting tradition. Now, uh, I was just um, coincidentally with that. So, you know, Alex, our good friend Alex um, from church, right? Filipino Alex. Oh, Alex is... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. De La Paz. De La Paz, Sorry, yeah. so when, when, when he said... Alex, you great friend. I'm like, he's he's a he's your son. Yeah, not my four year old <laughs> Alex. No different one. Yeah. Yes, actually, four year old Alex gets confused when I say, "Look, his name is Alex too," and he's like, "No, <laughs> like, you can't have more than one Alex." You know, yeah. Uh, so I we were so you know we after um after the Holy Thursday Mass and the altar of repose and everything, we were um. I was we were having a chat with him. You know, he came to say hello to us um, while we were just standing in our little group and chatting. And uh, and I said, oh, so I'd heard, I'd read about this thing today about the seven churches. He goes, yeah, we do that every year. And he was about to head off and do his seven churches visit that night. I'm like, oh, really? Wow. He goes, yeah. He said, you know, you have to do, you have to be a little bit fast because we don't know what time the churches are going to close. <laughs> yeah. They don't all stay open exactly. until midnight. So he goes, exactly. you go in. <laughs> he he spent they spend about five minutes and then move on. Um, yeah, to the next one. But they, but yeah, they, I mean, they're already doing it. So I wonder, it seems like he seems to know people that do no, it as well. So He's doing well. Maybe yeah. we can ask him how, uh, how he's... Yeah. Um, <laughs> Need his map. Schedule. Yeah. He's yeah. Yeah. map all schedules. Show me your Google Maps. Characters. Yeah, how do you yeah. Do yeah. How'd he go? Oh, yeah. wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm. Yep. So anyway, I thought that was a, an interesting tradition. And I'd be interested if anyone who's listening has done it before and tell us about it and... Tell us how you do it. Um, the article says it's it'd be more difficult in, say, a rural diocese where, you know, the next church might be another hour. It might take it might take hours and hours to do. Uh, but certainly, here, right here in the suburbs and close to the city, there's there's churches galore. So it's it's certainly something that's possible to do. So that's an interesting devotional. Yeah. Yep. Uh, something else I wanted to mention uh, was Pope Francis's Easter homily, his Easter vigil Saturday homily. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I will put a link in our show notes. But there's two paragraphs I just wanted to, to emphasize um, as part of his focus. So uh, he talks about um, the, the women who are the first witnesses to the empty tomb. And he says one of the things that they do is, uh, is that they heard. In second place, the women heard. After they had seen the empty tomb, the two men daz- in dazzling garments said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. We do, And so Pope Francis says, we do well to listen to those words and to repeat them. He is not here. Whenever we think we have understood everything there is to know about God, and we pigeonhole him with our own ideas and categories, let's repeat to ourselves, he is not here. Whenever we seek him, only in times of emotion, so often passing and moments of need, only to set him aside and forget him for the rest of our daily life and decisions, let us repeat, he is not here. And wherever we, whenever we think we can imprison him in our words, in our formulas, in our customary way of thinking and acting, and neglect to seek him in the darkest corners of life, where there are people who weep, who struggle, suffer and hope, let us repeat, he is not here. Um, and he says, may we too hear the question of the women. Why do you look for the living among the dead? We cannot celebrate Easter if we continue to be dead, if we remain prisoners of the past, 
if in our lives we lack the courage to let ourselves be forgotten by God who forgives everything, the courage to change, to break the wor- with the works of evil, to decide for Jesus and his love, if we continue redu- to reduce faith to a talisman, making God a lovely memory from times past, instead of encountering him today as the living God who desires to change us and cha- to change our world, a Christianity that seeks the Lord among the ruins of the past and encloses him in the tomb of habit is a Christianity without Easter. Yet the Lord is risen. Let us not tarry among the tombs, but run to find him, the living one. Nor may we be afraid to seek him also in the faces of our brothers and sisters, in the stories of those who hope and dream, in the pain of those who suffer. God is there. And I thought that was a beautiful reflection. There's, there's a lot more that he says, and there, there are other things as well. But uh, I, I was thinking as I read that about um, the story of Jesus and the woman at the well, and she criticizes Jesus. You know, he says, you know, you give me a drink and whatever. And she's like, you a Jew asking me this, you know, um, and, uh, and she says, you know, our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, you know, because it's Jacob's well. She's our ancestors work, worshiped on this mountain. And now you tell us that we can only worship at the temple. And because she was a Samaritan, she couldn't go to the temple because the Jews and Samaritans hated each other. And she's saying, look at you, this superior thing. And, but Jesus says to her, I'm, I'm telling you that a time will come when people will worship, worship in spirit and in truth. And what he was saying is the presence of God isn't restricted just to the temple, the temple worship. And, you know, we see, for example, um, when Jesus dies, there's the, um, you know, there's the mention in the gospels of the, the veil being torn in two in the temple. The, and the veil is, yeah, the veil is, um, it's the entrance to the Holy of Holies, which is a place where only the high priest could enter in the temple. Uh, and so, and what Jesus was saying is that this holiness of the Holy of Holies is actually everywhere. And his, his death is a reminder of that. And we'll look at his ascension later on, you know, when we get to Ascension Sunday, his ascension is the idea, um, or the belief, I should say, not just the idea, it's the belief that actually God is everywhere. He ascends to his father, not to disappear from us, but to, so, that, so we know that his presence is everywhere. That, that he's present, you know, that he's present in our lives. The, the, you know, we are all, we are all holiness. You know, we are all his, you know, we are all doing his acts of holiness by praying and doing acts and so on. So we're witnesses to that holiness and we're, we're doers of that holiness as well. So, yeah. So I thought, um, I, I liked Pope Francis's words, you know, stop looking for God in things that are dead. You stop, you know, stop telling yourself that your past defines you. God forgives you. God is, God is ready to forgive you. You know, stop, stop, um, stop, reducing Easter to a formula where I have to do this, 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 and this. And if I do this formula, God will love me. God, God is not there. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Um, God is dynamic. God is a lover. God loves us. Uh, you know, and let's, instead of reducing Christianity to uh, um, an Easter to a formula, let's just, let's just understand the simple thing that, you know, that God created us. And in that creation gave us a dignity. Jesus came to show us the way to God. He doubled down and died for that because that's what happened to him. And then he rose from the dead and said, Hey, follow me. I'm here with you now. Follow me. And, and that life with God is what we're meant to be living. Not, not a formula. So uh, exactly. Yeah. So I thought that was great. Nice. Yeah. So that was a a great reflection there. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, any other Easter tidbits that you want to, did you, how, how was your calorie count on Easter Sunday? (laughs) It wasn't too bad. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. I think I asked, Slightly slowed down because, yep. like, like you know, you go to two families, yeah? Yes. <laughs> and you go, mm, yeah, maybe I just slow down. Yeah, yes. just slow down on this one because sometimes there are some families where they have a particular you know, mother in law. Yes. You know, and you look at the food and you think, Lord, have mercy. Go, <laughs> and then you might, and you, that person goes, You're not going to finish it, are you? And you go, you think you're, 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 no, no, no. I want to eat it. Yes. I want to eat it just to make her happy. <laughs> you're not going to finish your third course. <laughs> what can you see? Yeah, Even though like the we, first and second were just as big as the third one. Big as third one. It's like, oh my yeah. goodness. Me. I have, right. I've been to, not many, but I have been to a few dinners. One one was a, an Italian dinner. One was a Maltese dinner oh, in Malta. Oh my goodness, me, Lindsay. Yeah, where, uh, my goodness. Oh. It's like, it, and I make the same mistake, you know, where, um, you know, they give you they give you the first course. And you're like, mm, this is really good, you know, and you, and you finish, and they're like, oh, now I've got more. It's like, okay, I'm gonna work my way through this, and it's like I've made it, and now I've got more. I'm like, oh, wow, it's like it's like three dinners in one, and then there's dessert. <laughs> exactly, yeah. it's not, and then also yeah. it's not a dessert. 
it's little tidbits afterwards after the dessert, like yeah. you know, little fruits and yeah, and little biscuits yeah, yeah, and, and, and cream. I mean, a cre- oh, yeah, cream and yes. cheese, and you go, yeah, oh my yeah. goodness me, yeah. Oh. Now I know where I'm. This old man came rolling home, <laughs> no, definitely rolling home, <laughs> yeah, or trying try to drive home before falling asleep. Yeah, I think one time I tried, uh, ate so much, I went, oh, I feel so comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 wake up. Keep on driving. Keep on driving. <laughs> yeah. In the in the time when I've had these big meals that have almost given me a heart attack, um, though, one one thing I have noticed, one thing that's been consistent with with these people is their generosity, though. And I feel like I feel like it's I don't know if that's the tradition, but I feel like it's linked to the the, the fact that they they also have generous hearts. Not that they that they have to do it because the pressure is culturally I have to do it. Maybe that does happen as well. But um, at least the people that, you know, we've gone to these meals for with <laughs> surprise <laughs> meals, maybe you want to call them, but, you know, but, it's, but they, they're, they're just overwhelmingly generous people. Exactly, um, exactly, exactly. You know, and, and when you think about it, I mean, you know, a typical meal doesn't, you know, if, if that's what they were doing for their guests, there's a big cost to that as well. If you think about, you know, making a pasta oh, dish then making a meat dish, you know, then oh, making this dish mate. and making a soup and making yeah. dessert, you know, there, there's a, a lot of time goes in. That's hours and hours exactly. you know, that is. goes into that. It that you know, is. It that, is. That it's more money than you normally spend on a typical, you know, evening, you know, like dinner that you'd have. So there's a lot of generosity, I guess, that's linked to that too. Yeah. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Look, and also you got a lot of people to feed. And you know, yeah, yeah, so, true. So, yeah. We're not Jesus, where he just um, you know, make was it five loaves of fish into yeah. like feed a thousand. So sadly, but, but it does feel like that when you're eating. Oh when yeah, you're eating, and it's like <laughs> it does. oh, I've just yeah. eating for a thousand people. Yes, like, oh. yeah. But it look, yeah, it's it's so great doing that season. And it was funny is when you sit on the news of all the other seafood. Oh, and yeah. people trying to get it to get their way before. Yeah, it there's a so crazy rush, isn't there, isn't there for seafood at Easter it. time? Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then after this, it's, it's season, like a Black Friday uh, sale, but seafood. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's seafood. Yeah, seafood Friday. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you try to get all your, all your um, uh, what's it, ingredients and meals and everything ready to prep, prep for um, you know, Good Friday, you not know, for Easter. Yeah. yeah. Of course, um, Easter Sunday, and maybe later on Easter Monday. It depends on how we want it. Yeah. And and speaking of that, I think one thing for us all to remember is that Easter isn't over uh, after Easter, Sunday, Easter, I keep Monday. I saying that too. We're, Easter is a season and that's what I love about it is that the Easter joy where, you know, let's carry that. So, cel- you know, celebrate Easter in your churches and everything, but then take the joy out and and share that joy how you can not you know we can't you know thump people with bibles you know in our, in our workplaces Ouch. or whatever you know what i mean but exactly. and, and i know that's a terrible yeah. expression but i guess <laughs> yeah, but, but let there be yeah. um after lent of the you know the challenges of lent the sacrifices and the difficulties that brings along let there be a visible joy that people see in a us visible joy uh, yeah you know, and and because you know when we go back into life now with me in, in my particular circumstances the easter is always school holidays so and i'm a, i'm a teacher so there's a bit of a break associated with Easter, usually speaking, and then I'll go back to work. And that's where the challenges begin because work is very busy and work can be evenings quite often or more often than I like to admit. Um, and then on top of that, you know, there's my master's studies, which that's a, makes it very uniquely challenging as well. But uh, in that time, um, uh, you know, my, my challenge is, uh, is to let there be something joyful associated with my character, you know, during this Easter season. Uh, because uh, one of the marks of, you know, Christianity of the, the presence of the spirit is our joy is the, is the spirit of joy. So uh, that's one of the things to remember is, you know, is to keep the Easter season going as, you know, as where we can uh, and, and as much as we can and not to be artificially joyful, but to be genuinely joyful where you can too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, l- let's cap it off with a, a little footnote. Um, a bit of speaking of Easter joy. Um, so Lino, you were at my place just a uh, two nights oh, ago. Lindsay. Two oh, nights no, ago. Oh no, Lindsay. Oh, yeah. oh, are you sure you want to talk about this, bro? Oh this well, is, uh, look, I don't want to go anywhere. Yeah. No, crazy. I, I, would, I cannot yeah. believe what happened. Yeah. That night, man. No, I want to talk about like... the joyful aspects okay, of it. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we um. Definitely, definitely. So to let everyone know, so we had had a, a little dinner at my place, a barbecue dinner, because I, I like my barbecue. Um, uh, but, beautiful, but what we, beautiful, Valenzi, yeah, awesome. Yeah, what we normally do in term one holidays, if we can, is there's a there's a family, there's a Samoan family in our church that we love, that we're very close to, all of us. So you, you know, you are, you know, your wife Bernadette, my wife Isabel, and then uh, you know Jared and Priscilla as well. You know, we're very close to this family. Um, we've known them, you know, we've known them since they've had how, how many children? Seven children. 
we, and eight we've is it now. Yeah, uh, eight. I forgot now. Um, oh gosh! But you know, wow. more than a few. But the thing it is, is you know, we've known this family since you know from you know from their first children who are grown adults to the you know to the the to the twin boys that came along and are grown adults and you know all the way through and and we love them. You know, like we genuinely love them. They genuinely love us, and they you know and. Um, and, uh, you know, the father of that family, Peter has been a mentor to you, me and Jared, uh, you know, in, in a, in a lot of ways, you know, we used to, remember we used to go and have a bit of guitar practice at the, you know, for when we used to all be in the choir together. I can feel my fingertips hurting right yeah. now, Lindsay. Well, guitar because practice ha- would go till three in the morning. Oh, three in the morning. <laughs> on a Thursday and, night. <laughs> and this is way before I bought my new guitar and yeah. I was using Peter. Well, sorry. Yeah. The, yeah. Can I mention his name, Peter? Yeah. You can mention Peter. It's all right. Yeah. P- 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 Peter's, Peter's yeah. guitar. Yeah. And. If for all those musos who probably know is yeah. when the string is so far away from the fret yeah, that you yes. have to press it down. It puts holes in your fingers, yeah. I, I was yeah. practicing. And it, it actually, <laughs> I think it really, uh, what's it called, um, helped me with my guitar playing because yeah. it, it really, um, you know, exercised my fingers to press further down. And when I bought my new guitar, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so easy. But, but <laughs> yeah. it was just, it was just like a conditioning. That's yeah. what I'm trying to find a way. It conditioned yeah. my fingers, but it was like, he, he really taught us how to play. And yeah. it, it was all those nights. Oh, it, it was like two or three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah because we, we'd practice all the songs <laughs> and then we'd yeah, just be talking yeah. for, yeah, the three of us. And, you know, I'd months, have uni yeah. the next yeah. day. You you know, Jared would have uni. You'd have, you, you'd have work. And work, we'd somehow manage to get mind. through the next day. Yeah, exactly. I was fine. I was fine. But this yeah. was, this was every Thursday for about five or six years, wasn't five it? Or six yeah. Six years. Yes. Yeah. And he had work the next day, but he, you know, we'd all just be talking into the night and Carmen, his wife, you know, he should be joining us and talking and, yeah, but uh, anyway, the point is, so unfortunately they couldn't come this time because uh, we'd all we were ready to go, like everything was ready. They were going to come, and then their house was struck by COVID. Sadly, uh, not a lot of COVID, but you know they did have to go into isolation. Um, so that was yeah, that was that was sad that we couldn't see them. So we you know I, we'll we'll organize another time, but we'd also organized uh father michael shadbolt so this is two father michaels ago <laughs> this gets very confusing trying to talk about yes, which father yes, michael it is, is. Confusing so, for our listeners it says, but yeah. it so okay. this father michael is the retired father michael so he retired yes. in uh 2018 18 uh, um, 18 so yeah. the, sort of the end of 2018 then, and then we had our new father michael in 2019 so they had a, they had a changeover at that time um so he's retired now um uh, but still active you know he does he does one mass uh, he does the sunday masses at um at a at a local parish and some of the morning masses there so he he's sort of like an assistant retired priest so, so sometimes he's busy in retirement he, he was talking about uh, but, <laughs> yeah but we hadn't seen him in a while so we um we happened to bump into him. He visited our parish to help a children's ministry there. Um, there was like a, a children's retreat that he was involved in with some other some other um, lay leaders as well. So we happened to bump into him. We thought, oh, we need to catch up. So we, you know, you know, sometimes you say let's catch up, and you never do. We actually did. We got yeah. We were like, we're not going to let this go. Yeah. So um. So it was. You know what? It was just beautiful to have him there. You know. So we had a you know had a barbecue dinner together. And normally, you know, he was saying that nine o'clock is his bedtime and he stayed till about exactly. almost 10 p.m. Wow. And, 10 PM, and we were just man. talking. Yeah. Um, we were just chatting. Yeah. Just chatting. So, yeah. So <laughs> we had a good laugh because <laughs> as, as you know, he and I traded some barbs. That was good, you know, and and only in the friendliest sense. Not There was nothing, you know. No, no, no. Yeah. No, so there was a particular thing that we were talking about that he and I might have a bit of a disagreement <laughs> on. <laughs> but the thing is, again, um, you know, what was beautiful about it. Last year, um, in one of our podcasts, I did a I did an episode on the the church's synod on synodality, right? And he ha- he also brought up synodality that that evening as well, not in a disagreeing sense, but you know he was like you know synodality is where we you know where we can talk and we can listen to each other, and and he wants he wants to see the Church of Melbourne really take on synodality because he you know he was basically he was mentioning some issues that he had with some things but let's we won't go into okay. that yeah, okay, yeah and yeah, and yeah. i happen to disagree with him on those issues <laughs> yeah. uh, but but you know what it was a beautiful practice of synodality because we could disagree and it only increased i think our love for each other of all the people in that room that that night our appreciation for each other it, it was true Christian synodality in that sense because we didn't leave going, oh, I'm glad he's God now. Thank God. You know, 
that was <laughs> no. so hard to talk to him. It, it was uh, nothing ooh. like that at all. It was great. No. You know, exactly, he got pretty exactly. passionate. You know, I tried to I tried to temper my passion a bit, but you know, <laughs> but he got pretty passionate about the issue. We talked and multi his passion. Oh, multi his passion. Lizzie. Oh but wow! It, it was never at no point in that evening was there any any um, negative negativity towards the people. You know, towards each other at all. It it was um and I loved that I I loved it so much and I actually I was actually sad when he left because you know we just, <laughs> it, it, it had just been such a beautiful evening with him and with all of us together yeah and there was lots of laughter as well you know in all this you know we had a, had a good laugh and you know and just poking poking fun at each other and, and you know what I've always poked fun at him and he's always done the same uh, because that's been our relationship and you know and because uh, because he has a sense of humor and definitely, and, definitely, and it was just really nice to be able to do that um. And then we had a great chat. Remember, he was talking about, you know, like he's could because uh, he's actually sort of uh, an exorcist in our diocese as, as well. Wow. And that subject yeah. suddenly was. Yeah, and it was a really easy. fascinating discussion. Discussion? Yeah, because he's uh, making a book, isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah, sort of writing a book, just just a small thing, nothing big, but just a small one for yeah, priests to, to help them in their very if they do that history. Yeah. yeah. But but what was really good was that he was he was doing a whole lot of myth busting, you know, about you know, about you know, what you see in the films, it's rubbish, you know, that kind of stuff. So um yeah. But it, it talk about Easter joy, that was so far, that has been one of the most joyous things in the Easter season that I've experienced was having you all of you with him there. Um, and, and just having, you know, just having a, a quiet barbecue and having a chat, it was, it was just, yeah, it was just such a beautiful evening and a great expression of synodality, as he mentioned as well. <laughs> Definitely. Can you imagine if yeah. Peter was there, Liz? Yeah. That's, oh, yes. Now, if Peter was there, it would have been a riot. It would have been great. Yeah. Oh, it would be, yeah. oh my yeah. goodness me. So we'll definitely do it wow. again. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. We'll be until there, like maybe midnight. Yeah. And oh, Father yeah. Michael goes, Ooh. Oh my goodness me! Yeah, I had to go home now. Yeah, yeah father sorry, would leave father. Early, earlier, but then leave, yeah, Peter would <laughs> yeah. be there till three in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a great discussion, Liz. Yeah, I yeah. really, really enjoyed it, and I think everyone had their input. Yeah. And their, um, you know, just dis- discussions, and that was great. It was like you said, it wasn't we weren't um so negative about this. Yeah. And that. We had a we had a say in what we wanted to say. Yeah. But then we. We just sort of listened and just conversed about it. Yeah, it you was know, joyful, so like, and yeah, and that's joyful, it. There, yeah, there was a lot of listening, you know, exactly. a, 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 a it's, it's lot not, of appreciation for the other. Exactly, it's not all those. Yeah. you see, all those politicians and you know, those whatever yeah. they call them, trying places, to pull the rug out and you know, trying to you know, have you a know, go at each yeah. other and goes, oh. Yeah, well, we don't want to listen to mm. you having a go at your opposition. Yeah. We want to see who your policy is, but that's that's different. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just and you know, just we are in chat. election season here in in in, in oh, Australia, gosh. and a, a lot of it already has just been good old character assassination. Mm. You know how how to not it's dialogue? Silly. Yeah, it's the silly. opposite of synodality. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. I keep on saying, let, give us your policies. Give us what mm. your plan is. Not ha- go at the other person. Blah blah blah. It's mm. yeah. It's always but yeah. That, yeah. yeah, but it, it was great to have that had the discussion last night. Liz. Oh, yeah. last night was not two night two nights ago. Two nights ago. Wow, yeah. it's just two nights wow. ago. Oh my yeah. goodness, me! Time flies so fast. Yeah, Ooh. at time of recording, two nights ago. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, let's uh, let's roll up. If anyone else has any stories about their own Easter joy or about their own Easter, uh, we, yeah, we'd love to. Yeah, uh, on Discord, I um, I posted about Easter and said if you've got any photos, um. And uh, yeah, one user, that, yep, Jay Faz shared some of the some of the um, photos from from their parish, and that was awesome. I'd love to see those. Waverley, so, because yeah. we sometimes yeah. drive past that on the way yeah. to um, uh, Bernadette's brother's place in yes. Box Hill. And and what's the name of that parish? Holy Family. Holy Family. Yeah. That's so really it's like cool. a, yeah, another one. <laughs> it's a rival. That's yeah, a rival. Yeah, we like to think, we like to think we're the better Holy Family, but there's no. no like, yeah, there's, yeah, that's yeah. nonsense too. <laughs> synodality. Synodality. Yeah. <laughs> we still love you, Holy Family, Mount yeah. Waverly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, yeah. No. So so thanks for sharing that too. So let's um uh, you know, we we always talk about a bit of science, and we haven't got Caroline. So wow. So uh, let's um, oh. let's have a go at this. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I shared an article with Caroline. I said, oh Caroline, this would be a great one for you to talk about. You know, one day. Uh, and she's not here to talk about it. Um, but there is a follow up topic I would like to do one uh, like at another point. However, this topic is called. Five failed alternatives to the Big Bang Theory and why they didn't work. And I thought this was fascinating because the Big Bang Theory is is awesome. All right, it's just you know this, this sort of this explanation of how everything came to be. 
And, uh, and what I like about this is, you know, there were alternatives too. What else did, uh, it's the curiosity in me that, and this is what the thing is, I'm not a scientist, but I'm definitely a science enthusiast. And I, I love the curiosity and the answers that science provides to some of the mysteries of the universe and how things, um, you know, are and came to be from a scientific standpoint. So there were alternatives to the Big Bang Theory that existed too, like competing theories that were logical and just as legitimate. But uh, but obviously, develops in, there were developments in science which uh, which obviously uh, debunked them. Basically, that, that they couldn't be that they, they couldn't be possible in light of you know an expanding universe. So um, I've got a link to the to the article in the show notes from space.com, one of my favorite sites <laughs> websites. <laughs> uh, um, but essentially, first of all, the Big Bang theory. Uh, what is it? Uh, now it doesn't mention this article, but also props to. Father George Lemaitre, and I don't know if I'm saying that properly, the um, Belgian Catholic priest who actually came up with what the, this theory that would become what we know as the Big Bang Theory. So people need to know that a Catholic priest actually contributed to what we popularly call the Big Bang Theory now. So he was a contemporary of Albert Einstein. And um, and this was the follow-up I was saying before. Um, I'll have to push Caroline to do a topic just on him uh, you know, and his contributions to the Big Bang Theory. But that's for another day. The Big Bang Theory itself is the explanation for how the universe began 13.8 billion years ago. So that, that's the, that's, it's a scientific explanation for that. Yep. So it's quite old. Yep. Um, it's the leading explanation. And although it is, there were some, there were some alternatives. Uh, so just first of all, there are, here are some, there are sort of uh, a list of, uh, you know, of maybe five or six points about what the Big Bang Theory is to understand it. So um, here are three assumptions, first of all, that um, scientists make about the universe and their observations of it. The laws of physics are universal and don't change with time or location in space. So the, universal, the, the laws of physics are universal to our entire universe, expanding universe. The universe is homogenous, so, um, so roughly the same in every direction though not necessarily in all of time. And there's a reason for that. We'll talk about that later, maybe. We'll see how we go. And <laughs> the other thing also, an assumption is humans don't observe the universe from a privileged location such as the very center. So our solar system is not in the center of our universe. It's actually kind of, no. yeah. So, um, and in fact, our galaxy is not in the center. Of, yeah, yeah. So we're not in a privileged place to, to observe the universe itself. So... Um, when applied to Einstein's equations, these assumptions indicate that the universe has several properties. So um, you know that Einstein came up with a theory of, of relativity and so on, which was proven just over a decade or under a decade ago. I'm not 100 sure when it was. Me too. When Einstein did. Yeah. You know what I love? Caroline. Caroline yeah, exactly. Caroline. Sorry. Hey. What I love is when we're not sure, we we'll just say we'll get Caroline to explain that Caroline's to us. Exactly. So <laughs> anyway, uh, Einstein's. Uh, um, uh, what is it? Uh, equations tell us the following: the universe is continually expanding. So our universe is expanding, uh, growing. Another another one is that the universe emerged from a hot, dense state at some infinite time in the past. The lightest elements, hydrogen and helium, were created in the first moments of the universe. And a background of microwave radiation fills the entire universe. And that's really important because um, this microwave radiation is actually one of the reasons for debunking some of the other alternatives to the Big Bang Theory. So, Lena, you ready for some, some alternatives? Oh, okay. Here we All go. Right. Here we go. Yeah. One, one of the alternatives uh, was that the universe is eternal. So, before the Big Bang Theory, the consensus amongst scientists was that the universe just was always has been and it's just it's just it's always existed the way that it's existed simple as that um and so uh there might have been a creation event at some point in the distant past however um pretty much the universe simply exists as it has and, and always and and always will exist the same way um so it said it says here sure stars occasionally blow up and the random comet appeared but on the whole, the universe simply was. It was one great cosmic tapestry that at large scales at least remained unchanged for eternity. So that was the eternal universe theory. Uh, however, um, that was debunked when Edwin Hubble, a really you know, significant as astronomer, discovered the expansion of the universe. So he kind of discovered the, you know, this expanding universe. So this discovery immediately threw a wrench in the idea of the eternal universe. Now, speaking of Edward Hubble, Edwin Hubble discovering the expanding universe, George Lemaitre, Lemaitre was also part of that, but Edward Hubble, Edwin Hubble tends to be credited. So 
uh, the um, the what is it the that in- international union that decides the planets and how many planets there are, and unfortunately decided that Pluto is not a planet. Thinking about Star Trek, sorry about that. No, not no, the United so Federation of Planets. Planets. However, so a different one. Um, they renamed the theory the um, the Hubble Lemaitre theory as well. So that's that's good. something to note as good, well. Good, good, yeah. Good. So, uh, however, the eternal universe doesn't work. Evidence shows that we live in a dynamic, evolving universe. So it's not just in a steady, static state as, as they had thought it had been. So the steady state universe is, is another theory. So even with the realization that the universe is expanding, many astronomers were still resistant to the concept of the Big Bang. The oh, biggest contender okay. in, the early, <laughs> yeah, in the early 20th century was a theory called the steady state model, and this was proposed by astronomer Fred Hoyle. In, the, in this model, the universe is expanding, but there's always new matter appearing in the void to replace it. So according to that theory, the cosmos does get bigger, but the density stays the same, thus rescuing the general themes of the eternal universe. So what Hoyle was trying to do was say, all right, the universe is expanding. Uh, he was clearly uh, into the eternal universe idea, but instead of eternal, now that, now that we know the universe is, is expanding, it's, it's still sort of steady and unchanging because as the universe expands, where there was a void outside the universe, matter just falls into place there. So we can say it's steady standing, steady state, and that kind of, in a way, saves the universal, uh, the, or the eternal universe theory in a sense. Um, however, it says here, um, it came to a screeching halt with two major observations. One is quasars, and the other one is this microwave background radiation, or CMB, as I talked about before. Quasars are intensely bright sources of radio emissions found exclusively in the distant universe, and the cosmic, uh, cosmic microwave background is a source of radiation that surrounds us on all sides. It sounds like the force, doesn't it? Um, in, yeah. Um, so in the Big Bang picture, these are easy to explain. The light comes from the earlier epoch in cosmic history when things were different. But in the steady state model, the early universe should look like the modern universe. So you know how we um, we talked about, Caroline talks about redshift. She explained this to us last <laughs> yeah, episode. Yeah, redshift. Yeah. yeah. So the mm-hmm. idea of, you know, you can see the light of, um, of stars that are no longer there. Um, today, or you know, or that might be in a different position, or or the you know that once existed but have now exploded or have died. Yeah, so um, the steady state can't stand up to to that um, to, because of that. Uh, now another theory is the electric universe, and this one really, this one really got me. All right, I was bamboozled by this, so I'll just I'm going to rely heavily on the text for this one. So. Um, with the steady state done, uh, gone, uh, another contender rose up to challenge the Big Bang thanks to Nobel Prize winning physicist Hans Alf- Alfen. I hope I said that right. He was uh, a master of understanding the forces inside electricity charged gases known as plasmas. And he developed an entire branch of physics known as magnetohydrodynamics. What a great name. I love that. So, wow, uh, that's a long name. Yeah. That's a long name. Yep. I mean, scientific has to have a long name. So oh, Definitely. Yeah. So he argued that because electromagnetic magnetic forces were far stronger than gravitational forces, what we observe in the cosmos should be better understood as the consequences of electromagnetism, not gravity. This included the evolution of the solar system, the birth of stars, and the expansion of the universe. He argued that the universe was composed of large pockets of matter and antimatter, now it's getting very Star Trek, uh, which okay, are constantly, say. yeah, and these are, and these are constantly in, in competition. The bubbles expand against each other, resulting in what we perceive as the expansion of the universe. And when they meet, the light of uh, cosmic microwave, uh, cosmic microwave background, is generated. He theorized. However, this was debunked because there is no way for an electric universe to match all the observations. Most importantly, Hubble's law. So for nearby galaxies, the speed of their recession is proportional to their distance, something neatly explained by general relativity and the expansion of space. In Alfen's version, all galaxies receded at an equal rate. And then it says, sorry, Hannes, (laughs) which is, or Hans, yeah. Anyway, so I think it's Hans, yeah. Um, so, uh, So his theory, again, it's logical, it makes perfect sense, but it's debunked by the observations that have been made of our universe and its expansion and so on. So I've got two more very quickly. The Mixbuster cosmology, which was that's, named Yeah. That so so sounds like a a kitchen utensil. Oh sorry, this you are, is not right. You are absolutely right. <laughs> because it was named after a brand of kitchen blenders. The Mixmaster. Well done. Well there done. You go, there you go. Yeah. 
All right, so um, <laughs> sorry. So, uh, so the thing is, the with the Big Bang theory, I mean, what what it says is that no theory is perfect, and one puzzling feature within the Big Bang theory, a feature of our universe, is how smooth it is at large scales. Regions of the cosmos vastly separated from each other have roughly the same temperature. There simply wasn't enough time in the early universe for all of these all patches these to even patches out. Just to even out. Mm, yeah, that sort of makes sense. Yeah. Yep. So this is called the horizon problem. And in 1969, Charles, uh, Charles Misner developed a solution to it called Mixmaster Cosmology. Yes, named after the blender. In a Mixmaster universe, the early cosmos was incredibly chaotic, with space constantly sloshing back and forth. This chaotic action did two things. It mixed up material at small scales, eventually giving rise to galaxies, and evened things out on large scales to make the universe, the overall universe homogeneous. Despite the cool name, the math never really worked out for the mixed master models. And another description of the early universe called inflation, which I haven't got time to explain because I haven't done the research yet, was able to explain the uh, horizon problem in a much simpler way. Let's just, um, what is it, deflect her, um, inflation to Caroline and get her to explain it one day. And we're not talking about economic inflation, we're talking about... No, yeah. no, no, yep, definitely. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, talk about galactic inflation or universal inflation. All right, and lastly... Cyclic universes. This one's kind of cool, right? So one of the biggest conceptual problems with the Big Bang is that it has a beginning. There was a time with no universe and now a time with a universe. So that's the Big Bang theory. There was no universe at one time and now there is. It's just come into being. Because the Big Bang model doesn't attempt to explain the true beginning of the universe, there have been many attempts over years to come up with some, some scenario that generates a Big Bang from some other physical process. So what they were trying to say was, was there another physical thing that happened, like a chain of events that led to the Big Bang? Uh, so almost all attempts to at replace the Big Bang end up delivering some sort of cyclical universe in which the Big Bang is just one of an infinitely long string of universes. Because if you replace the Big Bang with another singular occurrence, you, have, you haven't really changed anything. So in essence, the cyclic model represents an eternal universe, but with more steps. So basically, yeah, the idea that uh, there was a universe before this one and it did whatever it did, which led to the creation of this one. And then this one eventually will end and lead to the creation causal causal events of another one and so on. So that was, oh, wow. yeah, that was a theory of the cyclic universe. Um, so there are many cyclic models and all of them re rely on highly speculative physics. Perhaps um, uh, higher dimensional uh, brains kept colliding, uh, triggering new big bangs. Or maybe inflation just doesn't stop and there's always a new universe right around the corner. Or maybe the universe will eventually collapse, reach some incredibly incredible small quantum size and then bounce right back again. But all of these models have difficulty explaining dark energy, that the expansion of our universe is accelerating with no signs of slowing down. So as far as we can tell, the cosmos is a one and done affair. Uh, so, um, yeah, basically, these are the all the different models. It says here, um, so no matter what, the Big Bang model will always win. And, and that's because, like any good science, what has been observed so far supports the Big Bang model as the, as the best one to explain how our universe exists. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So there you go. The Big Bang Theory. Wow. Not just a wow. funny TV show. <laughs> no, definitely not. Great yeah. TV show anyway. Yeah, definitely. I can't remember. What, how many was there? Lizzie? Five. Five of them? What's that? Yeah, theories. These are five theories. Five yeah. theories. There's probably more, Goodness. but these are probably the five most prominent ones most that prominent stack ones. up as, as yes. the most logical, I guess. Yep. Wow, man. And, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it just blows my mind. I was thinking that, of course, there are other universes out there, and yeah, they'll take us hundreds of years to be able to um, explore them. Oh, mm -hmm. to explore a galaxy will take millions of years to explore it. <laughs> if if we even get to manage to explore our galaxy, our our, our um, well, our galaxy, let alone the universe itself. I mean, the galaxy is one problem. Exactly. <laughs> the universe exactly. is a whole other problem, like in terms yeah, of exploration. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. For our for our part, I think we 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 just it's a very small step, <laughs> small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. But but what what I'm saying is is like we. we it's it's amazing to think that there's so much out there at the moment. Oh yeah, and yep. so much to you know we've explored Earth. I think we've done um, explored all Earth for 
for all, well, or for everything. There's, there's a lot but of Earth, there's the Earth, Earth we things. haven't explored, though, as well. Uh, well, I mean, this is correct. Yeah. I was about to say that. I think there's a few little things that we haven't still haven't yeah. explored on Earth. Yeah, understanding our planet. I mean, we've probably mapped the planet out. You know, satellites can do that. That's but exactly. actually but exploring. exploring. You know, there's so much more exploration to be done. Yeah, uh, definitely, definitely, yeah. definitely. Let alone the solar system. Let alone, oh, let alone, you know, yeah. the moon, for example. <laughs> moon. You know? Well, exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. That's each amazing. each planet is a project of its own. It would take, uh, uh, like, for example, to explore all of Mars will take a long, long time. A long, yeah. long we've, time. We've, really, we've got a couple mm. of buggies over there with cameras on them, <laughs> you know, and, a, and one and the, little helicopter. That's you know, <laughs> and they're doing well. Doing observations, doing well. yeah, yeah, they're doing well. The Perseverance for, rover and the others, yeah. Exactly, and they're doing very well. I, you know, I think we, a lot of people have skeptics and blah blah blah. They think, oh, those things won't fly or whatever. But they have brought us pictures of another planet, of another what's going on, and it's an unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, I love um just to finish this part off. I love the memes that I've seen of uh of of a like a Mars rover. You know, drive, pointing its camera at something, and then you've got aliens outside the camera holding like a canvas, like a picture of a dead world, like a, an empty world, oh, so, that, so that they'll go away, like humans won't send more. Yeah, you know, or like you know, or the canvas might have something like "Get off my lawn," or you know, or you know, or "Turn around," or whatever it might be. You know? Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're great. Yeah. All right. Well, let's um let's finish the show, Lino, by doing what we always do and talking about. Uh, some of the things that have entertained us. And I've got a, I'm going to start with an Easter themed one to begin with. Uh, so you know how at Christmas time, there are movies that you watch year in and year out. Yeah. 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 Uh, Easter, Easter things. I can't remember anything to yeah. watch on Easter. Well, look, mo- except most, except yeah. the most, most, yeah. Yeah, the passion of our Lord. Yeah. Most, um, um, most yeah. Easter movies, it will be a passion, something, you know, they'll yeah, be passion related. Like, mm, yeah. yeah. I've, I've never seen, the Easter Bunny saves Easter. <laughs> you know, like, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah. Easter Bunny. It wasn't Santa Claus. Santa Claus 1, Santa Claus 2. Yeah, there's, there's all these. Easter yeah. Bunny 1. Oh, the Tim crazy, Allen is the Santa crazy. Claus and yeah. <laughs> um, but one one movie. Uh, so, yeah, I uh, it used to be The Passion of the Christ for me years and years ago. So for maybe about three or four Easter's, we'd watch The Passion. However, um, uh, not so much in my house at the moment. Well, one, because, uh, you know, I don't think my kids should watch it yet. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. definitely not. Uh, you, know, um, no. uh, you know, as uh, as helpful as the film has been as a spiritual reflection, um, Mel Gibson has a thing for violence, <laughs> and Woo. you know, and not yeah, holding yeah. back. And you yeah, know, the exactly. fi- the yeah. film is, you know, it, uh, you know, I don't have an issue with the violence in the film. Don't get me wrong. You know, crucifixion was a terrible, brutal, bloody yeah. thing. You know, yeah, it um, was. so it was. I, it's not. I don't have an issue with with the violence or, or violence in some films if it has good context. However, for my kids, I'm just not ready to go there yet, and I think that's fair enough. Um, so what now? It's um, it's risen. Uh, there's a there was a, an Easter film uh, called Risen with. One of the finds. There are two finds. Which finds per brother was it? Hang on, I'm I'm going to Google that while while I talk. <laughs> yeah, um, Ralph Fiennes. Ralph. I I think so. Uh, but it's uh, I'm just gonna, here. It is. Um, Joseph Fiennes. Ralph Fiennes was another one. Was one of the others. This is Joseph Fiennes. I think he's the lesser known of the brothers. But anyway. Okay. Way, I don't cool, know cool, Hollywood. Cool, cool. Anyway, it's it's um it's uh, I also call it CSI Jerusalem. Basically, right? that's <laughs> that's my other name for it. So <laughs> okay. yeah, because what happens in this film? It's it's like an uh, it's like a story that's on top of the the gospel stories. So the the writers of the film have tried to put together this narrative of what happened in the days following Jesus's crucifixion and and resurrection appearances. So. Uh, it's it's from the point of view of um, I think Clavius was his name uh, um, uh, a a Roman soldier um, you know who's got a bit of rank and uh, the theme is that uh, he's looking for peace he's lived a life of war so conquering for Rome you know in the in the opening scenes he fights against Barabbas's zealot you know so Barabbas has been freed so he fights against Barabbas's zealots and some of his men are killed and people are injured and he ends up executing Barabbas so you know that's all just you know, made up okay. interesting story stuff. Yeah. Uh, and he's looking for peace all, you know, throughout the film. And then he's, he's shocked because he goes, he's sent by Pilate to the crucifixion because things are getting a bit out of hand and he's sent to sort of control the crowds and keep things calm. And, uh, and he sees Jesus on the cross. So, you know, dying on the cross and so on, or not, not dying, but, you know, but having already died. Uh, and then, the uh, then there's this whole thing about how you know Jesus' body isn't found in the tomb, and the the Jewish leadership 
are concerned that some of the followers of Jesus have stolen his body to invent the myth that Jesus has risen from the dead. And uh, so, yes, yeah. so they want the Romans to find Jesus's body or find out who stole it. And then, uh, and so they can debunk this, this resurrection talk that's going on, you know, this rising from the dead. So um, Clavius is, you know, given the task by Pilate to find the body but he does an investigation. So he goes to the tomb, he investigates, he finds the bottle of wine that the two Roman soldiers drunk and, you know, uh, before they ran away scared, you know, like this, yeah, you know, like the, um, you know, again, this is, you know, there's a lot of narrative going on that's been sort of added into the story. You know, he looks at the ropes and sees the ropes around the tomb that secured the tomb were split, you know, rather than cut, you know, they like they exploded. Um, you know, there's all, all this, you know, all this, you know, strange stuff's going on. And then he gets a lead because uh, you know, he starts, he starts, um, he starts uh, interrogating, you know, followers of Jesus. Anyone, anyone who talks about the resurrection of Jesus is brought to him for an interrogation. Interrogation, and you know, he talk, you know, yes. He manages oh, to wow. get one of the apostles and, you know, there's this, there's this, this scene I kind of like now where, uh, where he, um, he goes, you know, he's, he breaks this apostle down. I forgot which one it is now, but he breaks this apostle down by saying, you know, do you know how bad crucifixion is and nails going into the wrist? And you know, he tells you how terrible it is. And, you know, your, your leader would have asphyx, asphyx, asphyxiated and all this kind of stuff. You know? um, yeah, and, yeah. and so, you know, this follower is on the floor, head down, like he's been broken by these words. And then, uh, and he goes, so if you want to leave, just tell me where the followers of, of this Jesus person is. Tell, tell me where his followers are. And I'll let you go. And so he goes up to Clavius in his ear and he goes, we're everywhere, which is kind of cool. I like, you know, kind of like that. And, and then he leaves, he walks out smiling, happy, whatever else, you know, he's, yeah. Um, anyway, so the film, uh, so Clavius follows the disciples to where he thinks they're gathering and wants to arrest all of them and find out, you know, like, well, where's the body, whatever else. And he walks in, he walks into the upper room and he sees Jesus there with them. And he's like, and and he's shocked because he saw him die on the cross, and, and he's trying to work out what's going on, what's happened here, what's happened, uh, and uh, so in the end he ends up uh, helping them to to go to Galilee and to and there's kind of like this you know you know in Lord of the Rings where you know where they're where they're trying to evade <laughs> this is what I keep thinking of evade the orcs oh, no. that are pursuing them and you know, you know exactly, I keep thinking yeah, of Saruman yeah. send your best war so riders war you know and, and they're trying to they're trying to you know get away from them or whatever else there's this scene where there are Roman soldiers trying to find them and they're like hiding in the grass and you know slipping past them through a canyon and it just reminds me of that you know of that so badly <laughs> yeah but in the end basically in the end because he has a vision of peace he's told he's asked by Pilate early in the in the film you know, what is it that you want? And he goes, you know, I want to, I want power. I want a position. And then I want to use that so that I can, you know, have a house in the, in the country and a family. And I want peace, a life away from war. The peace that he wants is not what he gets. He gets a different peace and it's the peace of Christ. And, and I love that. I I thought that was, you know, again, it's not a historical film. A lot of poetic license is taken, but what I like about it is, as again, like the Passion of the Christ, I don't consider that, don't hate me for saying these people, but I don't consider it necessarily a historical film because, again, I, a lot of poetic license is taken in that film too. It's, ba- you know, it's based on the, um, on the reflections of, I think it was Anne Catherine Emmerich or someone like that. Um, yeah, but I see, I, just like the Passion, I see this film as a reflection on our understanding of who Jesus is, what Jesus was about. But instead of Jesus' point of view, it's an outsider's point of view, a Gentile, you know, a Roman soldier. So, so I appreciate it for that it was, yeah. And I, I, um, and it's one I can watch with my kids. Well, not with, not with Alexander because the start is still a bit violent and brutal. Yeah, it is, uh, isn't it, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. But definitely with Damien, Damien's old enough to watch it and we do watch it every year together now, you know, with, with, um, with Isabel. So it's, yeah, uh, um, certainly one that can still raise questions about the passion and why Jesus died and what it's all about. So, um, yeah, definitely, yeah. yeah. So I appreciate it for that. Yeah. Cool, How about cool, you, Lido? Cool. What's uh what's been entertaining you recently? Oh wow, man. Um it's just, sadly sadly we've been not oh, sad, sorry. <laughs> uh so far we've been still watching um Superstore. So that's very I oh, even been on that very, through that phrase, haven't you? Yeah. Still good for ages now because like now just like I said last uh, podcast there was another season. Yeah. And we're still going through that. I think because um if it gets too late in the night time, I don't think Benedict wants to watch something too full on in the sense of a movie. Yeah. Or anything yeah. too intense. We don't want to think <laughs> well, night time. Yeah, yeah. Mu- no, not time. It's yeah, winding exactly. down time, yeah. Or just to wind down and watch something more, you know, it's more funny and everything. And yeah. And if we can't we can't uh, watch anything she actually we'll just talk about a Big Bang Theory. 
she watches that. Yeah. Big Bang Theory and then sometimes Friends, which is another show. Um, um, for myself, um, nothing much. No. Did you mention that you'd been watching? Was it Lego Masters recently? Or well, yes, sorry, yeah. yeah. So we so Bernard has been one. It was on Monday. That Monday, Easter Monday, was huge because Lego Masters started. Yeah. Master Chef started. <laughs> the Voice started. Oh wow. <laughs> And I think there was something else. I think talk oh, about competition. A, <laughs> oh, tell me about it. And then I think on um, Monday, Tuesday they continued it, continued it. And then I think on Channel Ten there was something called the Dog House, which is about um, dogs who have been um, either uh, the owners can't look after them anymore. Okay. And then do these these places look after the dogs and 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 people families who want dogs come ah. over and have a look at them. So yep. it was good. I was like, this okay. is the Australian version because it's from a British version. Okay. And so she was going for going, what do they call it? Channel swapping for for, for yeah, stations. channel surfing. Yeah, yeah. That's right, channel yeah. surfing for stations. So <laughs> just but, but and we we have something that well I don't know if people have it anymore. It's called a uh, HD recorder. Yeah. It's let's say it's like the good old VCR VCR days, but VHS days. But it, it records on the hard drive. And we used to record the um, shows on the hard drive so we could catch up. Yeah. Now, the word catch up is now to be taken. Yeah. So it's, yeah, we, we could just sometimes could catch up on, on the um, iPad or, or on the yeah, computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Catch up on the shows, and that's how we do it now. <laughs> so we used, to, we used to record all these shows on the hard drive and just catch up on what was going on. But yeah. um, well, I don't know, I'm going to have to plug that thing out now. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do with it anymore. Yeah. But, um, but um, yeah, that's what I mean. It's it's crazy. It's it's like without my, my Monday, like I kept saying, it was yeah, it was four shows in one. It would I can hear it. Uh, I think I was playing. Of course, everyone knows about COD. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, I was I was just hearing it, and I listened to the voice, which is a sh- uh, singing show. Yeah. Like um, I think America, America's Got Talent still going, and I got, yeah. I think American Idol still going. That's incredible. But it's like those shows, and I can hear the singing and everything. I go, ooh. That person sounds great, Ooh, <laughs> you know. And um, yeah. yeah, it's just it, for myself. It hasn't been as much as the TV as much at, at the moment. But um, I like there is a show that I want to get back, not back into, but I want to try out. And if anyone wants to chat about it on Discord, please let <laughs> me how let me know how Bridgerton is because I saw oh, the okay. second season of it. Yeah, and um, I don't know, Lizzie's. Is it got still into that sort of she likes romance? she likes Did those she dramas? Seen it? Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen it before. No, I, I don't know much okay. about it because the thing is, I I get a bit <laughs> sorry, everyone. I, get, I, I don't. I get a bit bored by those kinds of shows. Yeah, I mean, it needs unless Bridgerton has phases or something. I'm just not gonna <laughs> and transporters. So just, okay, okay, okay. Look, I, I'm not big in big into those sort of you know, yeah um, dramas and everything. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Isabel has mentioned it, but I don't think she's watched it yet. Yeah, because yeah. this is the second season now, and um, right, I was like, wait, but that was, I think it was the first season before, and that was that went crazy on social media. Blah, yes, blah, blah, yeah, I remember everyone was talking about it, but it wasn't enough it. to and make I, me go, I really want to watch this. I know, I know, yeah. but this or second one it. was interesting. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, true. Yeah. The second one was interesting, and I go, yeah. okay, this is this is mm. an interesting concept. But I thought maybe something different than. I know we love our sci-fi. Sci-fi. We're still catching up on Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Um, still watching one? Star Trek Picard. Yeah, yeah, we still got. Yeah, been um, watching the Halo series. I'll say more about that in another episode, though. All good, all good. Yeah, yeah and um, I was still considering watching Bosch. You were talking about oh, Lucy on Amazon. You must. So you uh, must. I was considering, it, but I was thinking, what? Well, well, I understand where Bernadette's coming from. She wants to finish the season like that. She does want to chip and change because she wants to know where the storyline is, <laughs> and also we still have to watch. Oh my goodness, I keep, I think I sort of said it before. Blacklist is still going. Yeah, so that's still, a long series. Still, I haven't seen. I haven't seen any Blacklist. I've heard again another one. I've heard about, but um, but haven't yeah, seen. But with that yeah, one. again, people have said, yeah, this is a good series. So I might have to. Yeah, might have to give it a go. Yeah. Any phases in try Blacklist? No. <laughs> transporters? Uh, no, 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 no more transporters. This is but actually full <laughs> on modern warfare. But anyway, yeah, yeah. that's something else. Sure. That's something else. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, let's uh, let's wrap it up. This, you know what. It's the two of us, and it's gone longer than when we have the three of us. I think it was because when we were at the start, we were just talking about um, yeah. Easter. Because we're Easter? so casual. It's our casual episode. So we just relax, <laughs> and this getting, it's going to get longer than our conversation with Father Michael on Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's so cash. Yeah. It's so cash. Yeah. 
So let's uh, let's wrap it up there. Um, so first of all, I want to thank all of you for joining us for episode 77 of The Catholics of Oz. And as usual, we would love to thank some patrons for um, for supporting the network. So today we'd like to thank Gregory S., Melissa P., Greg C., Elizabeth M., and Travis Z. Uh, because of them, shows like The Catholics of Oz and all the other great shows on SQPN are possible. And if you'd like to join them, you can donate at sqpn.com slash give. Uh, also, we'd like to know your thoughts on the topics we've discussed. We've certainly had a lot to talk about today. Wow. Um, so lots of topics. Wow. So, uh, yeah. yeah so big you, Bang Theory, guys, yeah, please. Big, yeah. Wow. Um, explain the Big Bang Theory, please. <laughs> I reckon the Let's Science channel, when I put when, when it goes up there, there'll oh, be some, it's yeah, gonna explode, there's been some great it people on Discord explode. who have yeah, given us exactly. some great science. Yeah. So, cool, um, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anything like that, if you'd like to, yeah, please. Have you done the seven, uh, the seven, church's pilgrimage tell us about that Ooh, i'd love to know your experience that's, I, i'm wow. really fascinated by that so i yeah i'd like to know yeah um and uh while you're looking at our show notes at sqpn.com slash oz also head to sqpn.com slash discord and join our discord channel and chat with us you know what um, one thing i've noticed is that a lot of people have been saying um how positive it is it's a great so that um They've been on some other discords or some other, you know, in some other places online, and it tends to be quite negative. You know, the it usual kind of yeah. It can be a bit toxic um, out there. Yeah, I can but understand. So, yeah, but the rules have been set up that the, that our Discord that you know no conflicts. You know, put the appropriate um, topics in the appropriate channels, uh, and and generally it, it's been very positive, which has been been really nice to see. I've I've enjoyed. You know, sometimes I lurk, sometimes I join in. You know, just seeing what people are talking about. So different, um, different, it's a beautiful different. community. So if you'd like to join us, please do and and make yourself known and say hello. Um, there, there's the Let's Science and the uh, and the Catholics of Oz channels there if you want to throw some comments that way or, or anywhere else. But also, you can find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash starquestmedia or on Twitter at, at SQPM. And there's also the Catholics of Oz Facebook page, Catholics of, uh, facebook.com slash Catholics of Oz, spelled O-Z. And you can reach us by email at catholicsofoz at sqpn.com. Lino, thank you so much for being on this casual, a little bit longer than usual episode today. <laughs> so cash. Okay. So cash. <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much, Lindsay. Oh, goodness me. Wow. Easter's over, but not in the way that we know. Yep. The Easter... Um, Easter celebration is over, the mass, but the Easter season season. continues. It continues for us. Yes. I hope everyone goes well and uh, stay safe and God bless. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you, Lino. And once again, I'm Lindsay Sands. And thank you for listening to this casual Easter season episode of the Catholics of Oz on StarQuest.